true mathematics of, of the world, the universe, into our ad tech, ad tech space. So please welcome Catherine Williams, who is the head of data science at AppNexus and uh, joining us straight from the ivory tower. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here. Brian didn't actually say it, but I really did spend several years studying black holes in my life as a professional mathematician. And you may not know, but there's some really interesting, juicy, beautiful mathematics in there. For instance, my work helped to show that the surfaces of black holes are actually geometrically close cousins to soap bubbles and soap films. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> but ultimately, I was drawn out of the ivory tower because I really wanted to work on problems that had an actual impact on the world. I mean, I used to spend every day sitting there in my office at Columbia by myself working really hard to prove theorems that ultimately maybe a dozen people in the world would care about if I was lucky. And now I get to work with dozens of people every day across engineering, product, strategy, sales, clients. It's really exciting. I get to use math and data to create business impact that really affects people's lives and livelihoods, including all of yours in this room, every day. But it has been kind of a shift, I have to say. I've gone from contemplating the eternal mysteries of the universe to pretty much the opposite end of the spectrum, thinking about things like porn. <laughs> now, you laugh, but porn is actually a big problem for us. Marketers do not want to serve on porn. It's really bad for their business. Therefore, we really don't want to serve on porn, right? Now, how do we determine whether or not we're serving on porn? Well, Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart pretty much summed up our approach for a long time, 50 years ago, when he said of hardcore pornography, I know it when I see it. That's how we found it, too. We had people actually clicking on different domains and looking to see whether or not it was porn. Enter a data scientist. Once we had a data scientist on the case, he said, you know what, there's got to be a better way. You can just look at a porn domain name, right? It's not exactly subtle. They pretty much try to advertise what they're up to so that people can find it, right? Let me give you some examples. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. OK, well, you can maybe get the picture. <laughs> Pornsters put the dirty words right in the domain name so that people can find it, right? So my data scientist says, well, we got to be able to do this algorithmically, right? What if I just take my big bag of dirty words that indicate porn, and I just look for those words just right in the domain name? If I find it, it's probably porn, right? Sure enough, puts this into practice, and lo and behold, yep, you find an awful lot of porn that way. But some of it slips through the cracks. So he says, OK, how about if I put some more dirty words in there? Sure enough, you detect some more porn. Add some more dirty words and some misspellings, because you know they're a little sneaky like that, you know, mix up the dirty word. Um, sure enough, even more. But somehow there are these false positives that keep creeping through. These are domains that are not actually porn, but for some reason they have a dirty word in the domain name, right? So what's going on there? Why are these not, why are these showing up? Well, let's look at an example. A church. <laughs> There's a slut in the church. OK, so the data scientist, his name is Ryan, he says, OK, look, I know that there's not really supposed to be a slut in that domain name, right? I know when I read that domain name that it really reads as St. Paul's Lutheran Church. And if I know that, there ought to be some way to make an algorithm know that, too. Sure enough, he put together an algorithm that basically does exactly that. It breaks out a domain name into the component words, and it scores how likely that is to be the breakout. So these are real numbers here. The total probability that St. Paul's Lutheran Church actually parses as those four words, 2.7 times 10 to the minus 20. Now granted, that's a very small number. But if you look at alternate breakouts, including the one that includes slut, it's about 10,000 times less likely. 
So using this kind of logic, he's able to say, given a domain name, here's the way it breaks out. Now I look for dirty words, and sure enough, we no longer classify church websites as porn. <laughs> now, not all data science problems actually have such a nice tidy ending as this one. In fact, um, many of the problems that we work on are complex, iterative, ongoing. The team works on an array of problems across buy-side optimization, sell-side optimization, marketplace design and dynamics, anti-fraud. And <clears throat> with such a wide array of problems, you can imagine we need a pretty wide array of skills and backgrounds to be able to address them as well. Meet the team. The two on the screen are the, my Portland-based crew. I don't know if you can see if they're giving bunny ears to the ones in front. <laughs> so this team, like I said, has a wide array of backgrounds. Most of us come from math and science backgrounds. Many of us have advanced degrees, PhDs, master's degrees. In their previous lives, before coming to AppNexus, this team included experts on crystallization and glass optic fibers, nerve gas propagation, computational biology, um, complex systems and financial markets. But now, today at AppNexus, they each have a rigorous depth that they balance with business reality every day to create value. And they do it at scale. You may recall, we serve roughly 30 billion ads a day. We have 70 terabytes of data a day. So much media, so many predictions. I had to propose 200 servers for a dedicated data science computing cluster just so that we could pull in all the data that we know we need to be able to do all the cool stuff that we want to do. There are more interesting and important data science problems than we can count. And my team, they love doing it. I love doing it. This is so exciting. These are harder problems than in academia. Because you can't just cut off one little piece of a problem and study it in isolation. With these kinds of problems, you have to really like see and comprehend the whole system in order to be able to improve it. And so, in closing, let me just say, we are so excited, my team and I are so excited to get to work on these problems, to solve your problems, because you are our universe. Thank you. Great job, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you.